Mattress Bluff. I came out of service in 46, so 47, I was in art school. I thought I was a pretty good observer to begin with, but studying art really taught me how to become uh, a, a really darn good observer. I put together a little piece. It's called Hunting a Scene Through the Eyes of a Dog. I try to paint pictures, verbal pictures. He sees things as a painter. He visualizes stuff, and then you, and he transforms himself. Oh, boy. <laughs> Pause on the ice. Mm. Mm. Well, open the open the cage. I can't. I just have a wet paw here. My mind has always been a little, you know, hardly what you'd call commercial. Different. Yeah. Did you ever undress in front of a dog? Well, you know, it's funny. A, a bird, uh, a bird somehow doesn't count, right? <laughs> or a cat. But a dog, they really stare. <laughs> I, I was just come out of the shower, and here was my dog. Just... <laughs> you know they can't talk, right? That's the way they look at you, that. <laughs> And wagged her little tail and went out and told her friends what she'd seen. <laughs> Any routine is just peppered with references and things that he's seen and done. I fished, uh, I think, most of my life and never caught a big one. <laughs> oh, sorry, Roy. <clears throat> but I put together two, two fish talking to each other. There's Fred and Alphonse. <laughs> Unusual for a bass, right? <laughs> It's class, though, right? Classy bass. Two big bass have been in the lake 25 years, never been caught. Well, Alphonse, take a look at him up there. Hmm? Guy's got new rods this year. <laughs> look at that clown cast. <laughs> How about that, huh? Using a Hawaiian popper now. Jerking it too fast. Read the directions. <laughs> Nothing would take that, nothing, not even a turtle. Toss it again. <laughs> Hooked up in a tree. <laughs> How about that? How about that? You know what I'd like to do is jump in the boat and then out again. Give that guy a coronary. <laughs> Roy, did you see that? That thing must have gone that big, you see? Yeah, I tried it with your hand there. That thing must have gone that big. Come down out of the far end of the lake. I think you're down there. Brother, over here. Yeah! Oh! all that stuff all over, man. I got an eye. You dropped the string and there goes the beer. Look how the bait box is gone. How about that, Alphonse? How about that? Yeah. I was on an ABC affiliate, WING, which was 5,001 or so. That's not shabby. I mean, you get to hear heard probably in the Indianapolis. It was 6 to 8 in the morning, and it was the Johnny Winter Show. I just looked at this, what I call soup strainer in front of me with W-I-N-G call letters, and I, that, I really felt, wow, uh, this is radio. I'm, I'm really on the air. Oh, oh. And the engineers doing this, doing this, and I said, yeah, good for you. And I finally realized that I better start talking. Uh, they gave me a big break at Wing, and I learned on the job, so to speak. So I left radio, and then I went over to Columbus, I was at WBNS for almost three years. I said to myself, maybe, maybe an outside chance I could go to New York and maybe hit the big time. I went to New York for $56.46. I was scared to death. Oh, I wanted him to go. My goodness, to be stuck in Ohio the rest of our lives. I knew he could, he could do it. I didn't have any contacts. I just uh, knocked on a lot of doors and uh, a lot of it was luck. From Dayton, Ohio, a young lad named Johnny Winters. I was living hand to mouth, as it were, and um, this re represented an opportunity to um, 
well, uh, the, just the name of the show, Chance of a Lifetime, to be booked into some smart supper club or pick up some money someplace, a gig. Last uh, January, uh, my wife, Eileen, turned to me one day and said, why don't you go to New York? Why don't you try for the big time? And I said, uh, how are we going to do it? I mean, we've got a little boy, uh, Jay. How old is the boy? Three and a half. And I said, uh, we just, uh, we couldn't, couldn't work it. And she said, well, I don't see why not, because uh, I could go to work in a department store, which she hadn't she been working up to this no, time, though. No, I was able to support her. I had steady work then. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, well, I can, I can go to work in a department store in Dayton, which she did. Without her doing that, I couldn't have gone to New York. I was always for it. And um, I've always had complete confidence in him. How did things break for you? Well, uh, the first two and three months were plenty tough. And uh, then after that, um, after about five months, in fact, mm -hmm. uh, things started to open up, and I got a few breaks, and now things are really rolling along. I wasn't ever worried about it. And if it didn't work out, I mean, he could always come back to Dayton, right? You have a beautiful voice. I'm very anxious to see this. Something brand new, so let's not wait. Go to it. Fine, thank you very much. Let's hear it. This is entirely different, and that's all the report says. Watch it, it's different. I'm a private eye. Well, I kind of work for everybody, sort of a semi-private eye, if you know what I mean. Take, for instance, the other night I had to get down to Eddie's place. So what do I do? I jump on the subway. I get off the subway. I'm up the stairs and on the street. It's one of those foggy nights, you know what I mean? Real creepy-like. You can hear the frogs out croaking like crazy. Kind of eerie, and before I know it, I'm right there in front of Eddie's place, so I drop in for a drink. Hi, Eddie. <coughs> wow, what a sense of humor. You haven't changed a bit. Mind if I pour? Good. Here's looking at you, Eddie. This one's for me. Asperilla stinks. Suddenly I realize the time. It's 8, 14, 30. I gotta make a call. Watch the change, huh? Hello, Lily. It's me, doll. How you doing? Yeah. Uh, meet me down at Eddie's place, huh? Oh, the time? Oh, time doesn't make any difference. Say around 8, 17, 30. Okay, doll. I step out of the booth, and suddenly there's a guy there with a violin case. Only this guy ain't no musician, not in that violin case. Oh, he's kind of an artist. You know, he wants to do murals on the wall, so he takes out this submachine gun and... I don't like his work, so I tell him. By this time, the heat's on. There are a lot of eyes on me, and I hail a cab out in the street. It's a nice stop. So I get in, and a real clean-cut guy turns to me and says, Way too much. Say, let's go up the street a little ways and take a ride, huh? So we're riding along. It's a starry night, and suddenly there's the scent of cheap perfume in the air. That ten-cent stuff, but on her it smells real good. Yes, Lily. And I look over and I say, hi, doll. Gee, you look great. And she does. She says to me, eh. I don't take that from anybody. I, I don't suppose that I have to add this, but Johnny does all the sound effects himself, you know. I really, uh, at that time, um, was depending on... Um, sound effects much more than I do today. I love the sound effects that he can do, but still I haven't seen too many people be able to replicate. A little lightning. And, uh, raindrops are... I did them, uh, I guess, selfishly, I would be putting it for myself. I tried them out on me. <laughs> you 
you're your own best audience. <laughs> Fifty-two exactly, Colonel. We used to hiss like the cat at the dinner table. <laughs> Sure, my breath is bad. <laughs> there could be two if you ate mice. I was inclined to mock the kitty, as it were. <laughs> the noises were there. Uh, the bizarre sounds in the middle of the night. <laughs> be driving along and all of a sudden he'll... Sometimes he'll make screeching breaks. <laughs> no, I'm really not as old as I look. He's done that to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, terrible. Uh, things will be edited, of course, quite a bit here. I did a dog. <laughs> Ooh, 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 that's an old dog, which I'm old, so I can, I, I, I started out doing an old dog, and here I am now, and I am definitely an old dog. That's an old dog. <laughs> oh, come on, that's so corny. Don't you know any pop tunes? <laughs> uh, then I did a door closing and opening. <laughs> Now, good morning to you. Oh, I see we're going to rob the house. Now, here's a word from Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> I was doing impressions, impersonations of various characters, uh, like Boris Karloff. Something weird is going on. I, I, my voice, it feels so British. An old man came to me one night, and he said, I like you, you're fresh. And uh, you've got a tremendous ear, and you should go places. I'm not going back in there, Shay Warden. No, no, I'm not going back in there. Can you take some advice? And I said, sure. Hey, it's a cavalry. We're safe. I don't think you have to continue to use any more impersonations of stars. <laughs> I hear you've been imitating me. <laughs> well, you better stop it. What I think you should do coming from the Middle West, a lot of characters out there, develop your characters that you grew up with. Elwood, I always thought was a funny name. I knew guys called Elwood. Hi, I'm Elwood B. Suggins. You know what I said right after we bought this here house? Holy cow, what am I gonna do with all this garbage? You've done me a favor, strange person. He said a lot of the characters are people he knew, not people like him. A lot of these guys are guys, uh, some of the people he was in the service with. Or, you know, people he grew up with in Ohio. Thank you very much. And who oh, out there in television land? <laughs> this is my little sand castle. <laughs> and inside is a little sand princess. Hi, little princess. <laughs> Goodbye, little princess. Chester um, came from, if anything, came from me. I guess it was Chester. <laughs> well, I, um, I wasn't a problem child. I, uh, maybe my parents thought so. Uh, I didn't think so. I thought they were the problem. I've asked my folks about psychiatry. Dad can't spell it. <laughs> and Mom says, you'll always be crazy. I love that. I figured through Chester, I could really uh, speak out about my problems. You know, one song that the eggs don't like to hear, they hear a lot of music through the store, but one song they don't like to hear is Humpty Dumpty had a bad fall, Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall. Hi there, Jonathan Winters here, and mighty happy to introduce America's sweetheart, that lovable Maud Frickert. <laughs> Watch it, clown, you blew out my hearing aid. I always wondered why there was a dress in the closet, uh, a long black granny dress. That's how I got the, my first mister, <laughs> this fishnet, just... <laughs> I had an Aunt Lou, who was a tremendous woman, uh, physically a big, very heavy set woman. <laughs> Come on out to the home and see me. 
She was bedridden a great deal, but she always had a little brandy beside the bed. I was stoned. <laughs> Maud Frickard was kind of a, a, and it still is kind of a salute to, she's not quite a dirty old lady, but very close. Oh, wild! <laughs> My support hose just tingled. <laughs> when she sees the Italian man pass in Rome, you know, on the Ponte Vecchio, oh my God, you could crack walnuts on him. Call me Marty, it turns me on. <laughs> Maudie Frickert was always my favorite character. I loved Maudie. You know, when you're a little kid, that's kind of a separate entity. You know, I don't, I don't think I thought of Dad doing that. I don't know exactly who I thought it was. I don't know how you feel, but I felt that that was a man in a dress. Think about that. What could you do if I gave you a stick? <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> I can just get my hands on it. <laughs> Do something with a stick. Watch you do a routine with a stick. You can give him anything. Well, that was a pretty good cast, wasn't it, Bob? I think we're on to something this time. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Margaret. Try to swim in. <laughs> Send in those big cats. <laughs> Uh, send in the smaller ones. <laughs> I should like to play for you now an old tune that I played when I was in Vienna. It's called Und steile beatze kühne, lachtine verarne, which means along the river we go. <laughs> Imagine what I could do if I had the other part. <laughs> Doctor, I'm not kidding. I seen them beetles, and this is one of their feelers. Start the oven route. The United Nations now recognizes the delegate from Nassau <laughs> Children, I want you to pay attention now. This is A5 square. Freddy, come here. <laughs> in the bloody stocks too long now. I'm sorry about it. Well, I just thought I'd drive that long ball down the fairway. Robin and I were out here belt a couple of two. It's like one of those days down here at the Sands. Down there in the old cat box. Oh, that's a nice one, just up there, just this side of the green. Well, every time I play a little golf, I drive a little ball down the fairway. It's time now for the kill. Toro, Toro, aquí. Muere ese león, muere ese león. Toro, muere ese león. Muere ese león. No, no, se toro. Muere ese león. Don't shine that mirror in his eyes, lady. They go crazy. I missed. He didn't. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm the old witch. Oh, what's the 
matter? Your little, you're coming my on, voice you're a little. You're coming on a little. Oh, oh I'm sorry. You don't have your own show till next year. I weigh my wand at the pair. <laughs> oh, say, don't, don't go to the refrigerator yet. Please, not yet. My name is Jonathan Winters. I'm from Dayton, Ohio. I'm 5 feet 11 and a half, weigh 195 pounds. I have black hair, flashing brown eyes. I like hunting, fishing, and taffy apples. And if anyone has any information as to my whereabouts, please contact me immediately. <laughs> Santa Barbara Bank and Trust. I'm inclined to not so much bank here, but withdraw. Jonathan Winters comes into the bank about once a week at least. This old job is new to me. I'm usually, you know, back in the vault uh, playing with Miss Carstairs. <laughs> he entertains us all. <laughs> we all enjoy his company. She uh, dresses like a man, acts like a lady, and barks like a dog. <laughs> um, we never know exactly what he's going to be up to next. She's the only one that when she comes in the first thing in the morning, she goes to the water cooler, takes her teeth out, puts them on the water cooler, and does this. <laughs> I've gone in here as uh, different people many times. Let me introduce myself at this time. Alan Benbody. Yes, my name is uh, Brian Balderhofer. Hi. Uh, Carl Puffton. <laughs> but it's kind of fun, you know, coming as a kid. You know, he drinks a lot, my dad. And that's when I rob him. <laughs> coming as an old man. What I guess I'm asking for is a dish. You know, a, a di not a regular dish to eat off of, but a dish to pick up a saddle lights. Uh, you know, the signals from Mars or whatever that damn place is. Coming as grandma. Coming as a bandit. Well, I'm against pistols. Machine gun, semi-automatic. I like grenades. <laughs> so far, I have not had to do any time for being those characters. God forbid if someone came in with a gun, dynamite or a mask, pointed shoes, I don't know what I'd do. I don't know what I'd do. I've been told to give them the money. Naturally, I'd do that. And if he were a fun person, I'd go with him. <laughs> Penny has uh, been very, very nice to me by taking me to the vault, and then we stay in there <laughs> and try to figure out how to get the box out of the area. There, the um, heavy deposit thing that I have my things in there. Safe deposit. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, I think that was the game we played: safety deposit. <laughs> Say well, thanking. Yes, thank you. <laughs> She's got some of the better lines. <laughs> Listen to this. I can do Yankee Doodle Dandy in another area. <laughs> Not good. How's that? <laughs> got a big laugh from the filthy people. <laughs> Congratulations, Penny. What is the promotion? Oh, I got a corporate title. Oh. Assistant Vice President. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh. I wonder how he got that. <laughs> <laughs> By going into the vault with you. <laughs> Hello, Inquire. <laughs> Exciting, huh? It's like maybe a Saturday afternoon and talking to boys and girls. Time to play Mr. and Mrs. Bank. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Trust. This whole bank just reeks of just trust me. <laughs> Trust me. Is the money there? Trust me. Can we get the money? Trust me. Do you want the money? Trust me. Trust me. Now, here we go. Just a minute. Uh, now he's going to go get us money. Uh, thank you. Take his money out. <laughs> this is the reason movies are tough. <laughs> So I remember all the gin mills. I, I remember all the clubs and the, the hotels. The road was tough for me. I see two of our scouts are riding up now. You have anything unusual to report, Lieutenant? Uh, uh. <laughs> These arrows speak for themselves. He wasn't just wild. I mean, he was controllable. Uh, 
controlled madness, it was. You're not only crazy horse, you crazy, crazy, crazy horse. Lenny Bruce would come downstairs and watch him, just because he was just doing outrageous stuff every night. Uh, a lot of my thing uh, was uh, certainly in life and certainly in clubs was um, I was afraid. General, General, what are they doing to us? They're wiping us out. Get that woman away from me. My time on the road was, to, yeah, get the money, send it home, and how do I get home without being coming home a cripple? I didn't mean to bother you, but uh, I was wondering if you'd take a picture of me out there on the rim. Why not? Why not? Go ahead. Just a little further back. Pretty close to the edge, aren't I? Wouldn't I tell you? Sure I would. A little further. <laughs> the bulk of my career in clubs was uh, the days when I was uh, into the gasoline and the sauce. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I don't think we ever home. We were always out partying and just living it up to the hill. I'm the time of my life. <laughs> I've heard stories about Jonathan. There's a in the, you know years ago. There was a famous story. Someone said they came and he was in a bar and he was talking to a hurricane glass, one of those big hurricane glasses. Going, we, I'm sorry, we can't get to you yet. We're trying. You're gonna be out in a while. There were pictures that they showed, some black and whites, back when he was in his 30s and 40s. And I had never seen those pictures. And I thought, you know, he would have been such a fun guy to party with, <laughs> to go crazy with. I mean, he just must have been a wild man. Maybe, maybe too wild for my, my group. I took chances. I did uh, some improvising, but uh, because of my habit, and because of this disease that has, you know, really put a collar on me, as free as I wanted to be, as much as I wanted to just go out into all directions and do different things, I became a robot. Hello there, I'm Santa Claus. Hello there, I'm you. Once I got that monkey off my shoulder, then I could, I really realized what improvisation was all about. Really able to think for the first time, really able to be clear and see pictures that were really there. Once I got my act together, I felt that I really wanted to work on my improvisation. This is not a prepared comedian. There's nobody can do what Johnny Winters does. There isn't another Johnny Winters. And I think I've always been married to improvisation. I never wanted a divorce from improvisation or a separation. I love improvisation. They'd bring out the box at the end, and he would improvise with stuff. And you know, just, I was just struck by all the different things he would do with anything, a piece of string. And just give him one thing, <laughs> it triggers him. Uh, Raj, I'm trying to get to you. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the aerial that uh, is bent. <laughs> yes, uh, we're all right here in Sector C. <laughs> Roger Baker, Apple Fox, Nebraska. <laughs> How's that scratch you, huh? We are gathered together. <laughs> you two wonderful people here. And your name? Margaret Louise. Louise. And you're? Joe. Wonderful. Do you mind, Joe? Turn your back. <laughs> you both be very happy. <laughs> you can get out now. I think improvisation in a strange way, it's really you. Well, I think it's always scary. I mean, that whole word encompasses um, taking chances. But I think that's what life is all about. A lot of you people have asked why my strange headdress. <laughs> well, don't ask anymore. boys and girls it's time for jump up and down room and this is little Billy wallet most of the time um, 
I would certainly like to think that I'm in charge and know what exactly what I'm doing and, and what I'm going to go for. But without getting into something that would cause me to be put away within the hour, I've always felt that someone is feeding me. All right, Jesse. Make fun of the gun. Make fun of it. Sure, it's a little flat. Wait till you see the flat bullets fly out of it. I want to get all the sun I can today. Some people would say there's a gland that's burnt out. Other people would stop. We go. That's a, that's a Chinese jump, isn't it? Yes. My name is Wing Chai Ni Fu, yeah. and this is my Chinese jump. <laughs> we sail up the Yangtze River on sunny days. <laughs> we have a little crew because it is a little boat. A little jump boat. <laughs> we have to go ashore and try to Shanghai little passenger. <laughs> when I finally got to see his house, I saw all these incredible that he collects. Antique toys, antique soldiers, I mean, all these different things, all this wonderful stuff in this one room, and I realized that's a bit like how he performs, because he's got all these things that he registers, and he uses them when he needs them. Oh, that's, uh, that's a jeweler's uh, glass. Take a look at your watch here. That's fascinating. You know, you give me a couple of days, and I'll repaint the mouse's ear. <laughs> I think he's like a sponge and he absorbs everything around him, and then it comes out in his own unique style. Listen, Annie, doggone you, I told you not to leave that kid out there on the beach so long. I have little tiny cassettes in here, and little files that I file up in here, and I, I call of them from time to time when I feel that I need them. Things come out of him, and I don't know that he ever even knew these things, but somewhere, Maybe when I wasn't there, I, uh, he's been exposed to these things and absorbed them, and maybe 30 years later it comes out. Well, Colonel, do I get to go ashore tonight or don't I? <laughs> he always said, I'm going on stage tonight, I have no idea what I'm going to say. Oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to say. And you get out there and it just starts coming and rolling and rolling, and I'm thinking, where is it coming from? That's the reason I love improvisation. Uh, long before anybody else criticizes you, long before your audience in front of you, this is your challenge, this is your baby. And um, uh, you can't blame it on writers, you can't blame it on direction, you can't blame it on the camera guy, makeup, uh, etc. It's you, you're on, you gotta do it. And uh, you either sink or swim with what you've got. It's the only time I had carte blanche is with the eggs where they just said do what you want to do just be sure that you get in california egg your attention please professor leslie fitzpuffin for california egg association uh just a minute let me finish my eggs and i'll be out to kill you <laughs> they love that humor i love to just look into her eyes i come in her to the hen house you know and just look at her and uh, polly how are you and, and she gets that look <laughs> Ah, you can tell she's laying. Here's something fun. Okay, clean up aisle six. Just ask for me. I'm just off the main highway. Way off the main highway. <laughs> Those were completely improvised. I mean, there was just a couple of word cues here. And uh, so it was fun. Hey there, I bet you thought I was a medical man. <laughs> I'm in garbage, or garbage, as they say. That's what I call the garbage. And he picked that up because I said, would you take the garbage out, darling? And I always called it garbage. And I thought it'd be funny to have him an English guy. You know, what is the problem with you? You've got too much garbage to use the word garbage. Paper bag. Go to your quarters. There is money in it, quite a bit, and it's going to put the kids through college. You're in garbage. Yeah, I'm in garbage. But it's going to be okay. It'll be fun. Ah! 
Got to give you a ticket, Marge. You're a litterer. Buzz off, little boy blue. What can I do if the trash bag busts on me? How strong these are. What are they? <gasps> Hefty. I can read. He was on the Tonight Show when Jack Parr was hosting, and I remember because my father would watch any time Jonathan was on. And watching my father laugh, and I went, if this man can make my father laugh, that's a great sign. I'm the voice of spring. <laughs> I bring you some little goodies from the bar. <laughs> Only his hairdresser knows for sure. Ah, <laughs> oh, you devil. Where did well, you decide uh, to do this? This is something new. What well, you I've been to the bar, and they... <laughs> You've been on, you've been on Third oh, Avenue is where you've been, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, took me uh, 45 minutes to get that oh, in. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. In the forest, we don't care. <laughs> Do you, uh, under my shoes are hooks. <laughs> is that right? My legs are like that of a goat. <laughs> but I dress for the city folks. But the birds and the bees and the animals and the fish and the creatures <laughs> all want to wish everybody a great big spring. <laughs> what, what, what would you say? Uh, uh, what are you? <laughs> No, I mean, I can't... They know in the bars. <laughs> I'm Jonathan Winters. You know why I'm here? I want you to look under that sheet and see what I've been working on. Well, I... Look! <laughs> <laughs> I hope I didn't see what I saw. A little man, six inches long. His face, hair, those tiny feet. Hey, where am I? <laughs> How many of these little men do you have, Doctor? Over 18,000. <laughs> I've got them all there in that file cabinet. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the material we don't use. <laughs> Mr. Winters got carried away. <laughs> what possessed you to say that? I don't know. <laughs> find it. But he would find comedy in anything. I mean, if, if it comes to his mind and it's dark, he will really explore it. Come with me right now. We're going across the street. Hopefully we don't get hit. And if we do, I sue them. <laughs> um, we're going to a hardware store. Don't you love tools? Isn't that a fun afternoon? I need a Black & Decker saw. And uh, what we're doing is a, is a play. And uh, we've got over 71 people from various ranches to come around to see it, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's called the execution. We've got a neighbor that's gonna, he's gonna sacrifice himself. <laughs> and he said we could cut his head off. And I don't know, I, I didn't know whether he was kidding or not. We'll find out. I want to introduce myself, if I may. I'm Ian Puffington. I'm truly at home in a big hardware store. It's Christmas every day. Does that sound bizarre to you? Uh, a, a person has a hardware store to ask for a black nigger saw to cut the person's head off. If you knew him, he's ugly. Here's something that's kind of sweet. It's uh, a sawhorse. And uh, if you're bored with a relative, put his or her neck on there. And <laughs> that's another reason I left England. Uh, they misinterpreted my humor. $718 for a blanket, that's the large size. Do you have a hand axe? That's gonna be awkward for him, because it'll take longer. I can't do that in one, one swoop. Just the sound makes you want to do a number on a person. It's a hell of an idea, though, isn't it? You know? 71 people to watch an execution of a guy offered to 81 years old to offer up to have his head cut off. <laughs> I have not been drinking, and there's no dope in me. 
You have to understand, people are just naturally crazy. I'd never been in the tank, should have been. Uh, never been in prison, probably should have been there. But I had a breakdown, and um, I turned myself in. It's the hardest thing I ever had to do. I hope I ever never have to do it again. But I went in, and I, uh, I had, no, not because of booze, not because of drugs, I just collapsed. However, to get out of character, which is sometimes hard to do, I frankly don't know who I am. <laughs> Furthermore, don't care. I felt that I was kind of a do-it-yourself guy. I wasn't, a, you know, uh, any kind of magic Christian or a Christian scientist, but I, I'd work this out. I could do it. And uh, I found out I couldn't, and uh, I had to get some help. There's two guys out there in white uniforms. Yes, we're going to the funny farm. I promise you that. <laughs> I did, I would say, you know, a, a hard, for me, eight months. I almost lost my sense of humor. Yeah, it ain't fun. Uh, just sitting looking outside of iron, and the guys that have been in there will tell you. And uh, I had to sit down and, and get my act together. But I came out, I, I, I realized everything had to change for me. And it wasn't, it seemed to me, more than a week before I got a call from Stanley Kramer about doing uh, uh, The Truck Driver, and it's a mad, 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 mad world. I didn't think I'd be up to it, very honestly. I told, told my wife, I'm scared, and I was scared. I, I was fresh out of the hospital, and I, I didn't know at that time uh, whether I was up to doing a part such as that. And I worked on the picture for, for six months, and she said something that, uh, boy, she's been right uh, so many times uh, if you don't take this movie. And it's the biggest movie you'll ever do, whether you never do another one. The fact is, if you don't take this movie, you'll never work again. And I don't mean to... I lose faith in you in this and that, but uh, it just makes sense. And she was right. So it was a very difficult but great time because I, I finally opened up and I, I realized that I was back and I was in charge, you know, of certainly of myself and my mind and, and uh, doing lines and this and that. And uh, things came together fairly quickly. You know, there was a, a suspicious-looking fellow hanging around outside the building when I came in, so I think I better go back out and see what he's doing. Hey, man. I thought I, didn't I just see you with a, a set of Cadillac keys in your pocket, in your hand there? Are you a policeman or something? I'm going to tell you something. Wait a minute, you go ease on me, understand? Because that man right there, he was here a moment ago. Where the hell is he? <laughs> he laid them keys on me, gave me the car. You and then he died instantly. <laughs> You got a chip on your shoulder? Ah, uh, you bet. It's big as a mountain. Bigger than you are, man. You live in that little dumpy house over there. You see that little house? The little dog over there. Run out the house. <laughs> Run out the house. Now, that's a dumpy house, a dumpy neighborhood. I'm going to pick a place to live where I want to live. Do you have trouble getting work? I'm going to do my thing. Hmm? <laughs> do you have any trouble getting work? Yeah, you bet I did. But I have a few things that help me. And they're not calling cards. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Make a man think, won't it? No, no. <laughs> Pay attention, I kill you too. <laughs> and I'm in a bad spot. Just tell, tell my family I'm here. My family never cared about me. So they uh -huh. made me go to work when I was two. Now, <laughs> I'm leveling with you, man. Yeah. Two is young. That, two is young. That, that, Five, I was ready to retire. <laughs> right. That, that, that is a. That is just a little bit young. You bet it is. Uh, I got something coming to me. Uh, is, do you... you better be good, too. I'm telling you, man, the sun is bad and the moon. Bad day or night. Do, what are your plans? I mean, you have any plans for the future? I got something going for me. I don't know what it is. I had it on me here. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. It's that bread in there, buddy. Yeah. That's what I got. That's my future. That's it. It was a true magical moment. It was just priceless. I mean, I was just dying. And I thought, this is, this is what people should cherish, these magical moments. When I first saw uh, Robin Williams, I said, oh my god, to match the two of them up, because I always dreamed of the two of them working, and then they finally hooked up. It was wonderful to see them hook up. Even when he was doing the show, it would take him 45 minutes to get from his car. They actually had to put it into his call time from when he got on the lot to when he got to the set, because he would do characters for everybody on the way to the set. Even when we were shooting on the night, whether they camera night when they actually were filming, they used to have to put, like, they would run out, it'd be like machine gun crews at Guadalcanal, they'd run out of ammunition. Keep up going! 
when we do these 30 minute riffs in the 10 minute magazines. So these guys are like, come on, get another one. Sir, I can't. There's no more film. Ain't no more film. Ain't no more film. We can't. They're going to run out. Going to run out. And the best stuff was usually before they were running, before the cameras were on, where he would just be free and then they would put on costumes. They would, they would still get good stuff, but the best stuff is when he was just open, you know, free to create without all the sets and all the other stuff. He and Jonathan are wonderful together. There are only a few guys that, very honestly, can really, that I've been able to go with. We did like this kind of a takeoff. It was like a thing where we, we were kind of, because he was my son, we were kind of playing, it was like playing soldiers, and all, but it became like an English war movie. We were in the trenches, and I was said, Teddy, Teddy, they've kicked me out of Eden. I said, why? For wearing a dress. He said, oh, don't say dress, say gown. He and Robin were going on and on and on. Because Jonathan was just blowing the doors off, and he was really funny. And they seemed to inspire each other. It was fun. I mean, that was the best times, when you can go back and forth with him. I paint uh, strictly out of my head and just hope for the best. I tried and have tried, not only with my comedy, but certainly with my paintings and my artwork, tried to be different, tried to be original. And it's very hard because almost everything has been done so many times. This woman the other day asked me, she said, um, how much are your paintings? And I said, 15,000. She said, oh my God, 15,000? Yeah. The painting's a joke. The idea's worth 15000 I know that the artwork for him has been the great uh, calmer. The reward uh, comes not uh, monetarily. It, it, it comes through the fact of being a real opportunity to relax. The reason I love painting, the chief reason, you're in charge. And that means a lot to a lot of us. You sink or swim with what you've done. And uh, an editor may pick away at you, a critic, a uh, buyer of your of your artwork, but he says, well, why don't you put a mouse in here? I'm not going to put a mouse in there. I don't work for Disney. I cannot uh, sum up Jonathan in a few sentences. Uh, you can't sum him up. I don't, you know, it's like, uh, do you have cliff notes for the Bible? <laughs> it's like, yeah, um, I can't really. I mean, I don't think it does him justice, and I think the only way to, is to see as much of him as possible. I will always remember him as a... Um as the nicest, the nicest comedian I've ever known. As the best comedian who ever lived. Okay? No, 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 no. That's terrible. Oh, God, edit that mother out. Oh, great guy. Good Joe. A, a regular guy. I mean, if it wasn't the comedian, if we weren't here, we'd say just a, a, a great dad. I wanted to see my kids grow up. If you're going to have kids, then for God's sake, you know, be there for them. He's always been a wonderful father. I'm so proud of him for that. In fact, I didn't think he'd be a very good father, but he's, he's a wonderful father. The one thing that I think that was probably the biggest thing in my life was I, I, I did watch him grow up. I did drop out of the clubs and damn near dropped out of the business, I guess. And for Dad to give that up, to stay home and be with us, then I think that even more so I realized how much uh, gratitude that I should feel for him. You have to take a cut. You've got to, uh, got to say goodbye to some cash. But I never wanted to say goodbye to my kids and I uh, never have. So uh, it's paid off, and that's, that's been a big thing for me. I feel very blessed that I've had him as a friend and as a father. I've, ble I've been blessed by both. I'm going to miss him calling me every day and not knowing exactly who's on the line. I know how many other people are going to miss him, and I just hope he lives a really, really, really long time because I love him so much, and he's... You know, it's funny, he asked one time, he said, you guys, have I been a good dad? And I said, you've been the best. I couldn't imagine a, a better dad. And we love him a lot. Let's play swords. <laughs> 
stone, the headstone, the angels, and the grave marker, I think uh, probably a parking meter could be nice. And then feet a quarter, what, what, whatever is going in the cemetery. And then I say things like, say something funny. It is you. Don't step on me, I'll get up. <laughs> and now I think the weird wagon is here for me, so I'll have to say goodnight. There we go, bye-bye. Don't talk for now. Hey, bye-bye. See y'all later. But at any rate, it's been fun, and I thank you for this opportunity to remain on the loose. Okay? Take care. You'll be good. Bye-bye. 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 Or you can be cool and say, bye-bye. <laughs> I gotta catch up on some Z's. Snore like a man, don't it? This is GPTV, your PBS station, serving Atlanta and all of Georgia. GPTV, bringing you the best. Members of my Fear of Commitment group have announced they're getting married. Oh, congratulations. There's a downside.